Hello and welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Jim Rugg. I'm Ed Piscor. Going to look at uh, the late Neil Adams Skate Man from Pacific Comics. This is 1983. This is basically the end of Pacific Comics because continuity starts publishing in 1984. So one of the last uh, Pacific Comics Neil Adams does before he strikes out on his own. Before we crack this open, I want to invite everybody watching at home to like, follow, and subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel if you haven't done so already. Hit the bell icon next to the subscribe button and you'll be notified when we post a new video. It'll give you a leg up on the kayfabe effect when you see a comic like Skate Man that you've got to add to your collection. You'll be notified as soon as the video goes up. You'll be the first one looking for it at your local comic shops, online, on eBay, wherever it is you go to track down a, uh, a desirable issue like Skate Man, which may disappear from those those sources quickly or it may go up in price. Either way, if you're the first one in line, uh, it'll it'll benefit you. And also let these videos play through to the end. That helps the YouTube algorithm share our videos with other comics fans that haven't found Cartoonist Kayfabe yet. It's how we grow this channel. We're at 60,000 subscribers strong. We're aiming for 600,000. So we need your help on that, and we thank you for your help so far. Neil thought highly of this uh, Skate Man character because it's a registered trademark. Like he, he did some due diligence, man, to make sure that the Shanes brothers were not going to be, uh, you know, taking this property off his hands. Also putting his name on the cover twice. <laughs> I like that. That's a good move. Um, I was so disappointed when I got hold of this, Ed, because like I do Street Angel with skateboarding, so to see roller skates, uh, not what I was hoping for, but this is a strange comic book. It's Yeah, it's, it's very odd. Uh, the nomenclature Krusty Bunkers come, come, came into our, our minds uh, after the Rob Liefeld conversation, and I have to imagine even though neil's name's on this sucker like you see some lines like this like that's that's not neil adams inkin yeah I, I think you're right and you know like i said continuity comics starts publishing shortly after this i feel like maybe he's gearing up with that studio ready to like let's take this to the next level you know you look at this and you think skate man and roller skates this is kind of a light jolly comic <laughs> it is not no this is heavy duty stuff and how about that for uh from cover to page one, you know, using the same image. Sometimes you see an image repeated on a cover. Page one, exactly the same as a cover for the most part. Yeah. Does it have, is the lettering new? Yeah. Jerkle. That's what everybody remembers, <laughs> that Jerkle statement. Uh, obscenely short shorts on our protagonist, man. Like, it's very... Weird talk of a union as well. We're forming a union, my foot in your face, and workers strike graffitied yeah. in the background. Like, I don't see a lot of union talk beyond this page. It's kind of weird. And and he's also, like, if I'm reading correctly, like, he's beating up, like, day laborers and stuff. Well, I guess maybe that's the, the union part. Like, they're scabs. So so he's he's against the union, and he's against the day laborers who, who are... Uh, participating in that stuff so here's what i will say about the roller skate stuff like we see skate man in action do throwing like flying kicks and stuff if you're able to do your your karate or kung fu with those roller skates it is going to be very devastating <laughs> oh yeah yeah shit man i remember man every everybody knows somebody who, who 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 smacked a dude in the head with a skateboard with the trucks down and uh what ha what happens with that stuff man uh pretty brutal because now we're in the era of the urethane wheel it had some give to it. <laughs> it's like straight up blackjack. It had some weight to it, too. Yeah. <laughs> That's a serious object. And he's fighting a bi biker gang is, is the main antagonist that we're going to see throughout here. Uh, fortunately, the cops show up as the, as the biker gang gets the upper hand on him before they can do too much damage. The cops break up the party. This this has that sense of like, it's, it's like Neil Adams in the same sp space as like George Lucas or... Or even like Kanye West or something, where like they did some, they had massive achievements, and now you can't tell them nothing, man. Yeah, I was gonna say, hasn't heard the word no in a while. Yeah, you can't tell these guys anything, and this is, you know, in every interview with 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 Neil Adams, like you just go online, go on YouTube. Of course, I went down those rabbit holes and watch everything just to to mm -hmm. you know be with him again and stuff. Uh, Neil, why are you doing this during COVID? Blah blah blah, to make money, to make money. Like we can we can uh, come up with fancy language for why it is we're doing what we're doing. But I need to feed my family, and I need to give all my kid put all my kids in apartments and houses and blah blah blah. Uh, this to me feels like 
trying to reverse engineer pop culture to try to create like the next new superhero. And uh, I thought that roller derby and shit like that was done like once it was discovered it was a work, not a shoot in like the 70s. I know that it would still be on or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I'm not uh, discrediting the people doing this stuff now because they're definitely playing for keeps. But back then when it was like at that level of popularity... It was kayfabe, I think, right? Like, it came out to be that way? Yeah, yeah, it did. It was a big big scandal because it was presented as sport. Right. Yeah, definitely. I want to note the uh, the color. There's no credits in this book, as far as I could tell. Uh-huh. And uh, I think that's noteworthy for your Krusty Bunkers yeah. comment, Ed. But also, like, it is feeling more and more like continuity. Because yeah, continuity, I think, of, of, of color as being a big chunk of what continuity, how it's visually distinctive. Yes. And it feels like we're starting to see that here. Yeah. You know, like there's a whole production piece that's a part of this. <laughs> and uh, the skateboarder comes up and finds him, you know, don't let him be dead. And he's not. So that's good. Loads him up on a skateboard and <laughs> pushes him back to uh, back home. <laughs> that's such a funny, <laughs> <laughs> this feels like an old man figuring, trying to do skateboarding. Right. Cause or, like, or me, this is what kids do playing around. <laughs> I like to think that Hervé Village has from uh, fantasy Island plays the little kid. <laughs> <here>. <laughs> like if, if I was to market this into a, feature film or something there's also so much storytelling going on right like you see the christian idea imagery in the background just very small you know showing that that home and that family this feels like such a continuity comics page not necessarily of just like the comics production stuff but in terms of like the um that like ad comics you know you get a lot of this kind of montage on the page in like instructional comics or how to use your TRS-80, Radio Shack comics and shit. This is so ridiculous, the origin. So he's in, I guess it's Vietnam, and uh, sees the uh, burning homes and the babies. Just over the top. This is purple, the purplest of pros. Practiced martial arts even as a kid, so he's kind of this super soldier that got out as soon as he could, and then one day back home he connects with an old army buddy who introduces him to roller derby and... I love this stuff, <laughs> like flailing bodies and everything. Skateboard or uh, roller skating is real fun. Even this is kind of cool. It makes me think of like the Dazzler cover that Bill Sienkiewicz does where Dazzler's roller skating and like lights are flashing everywhere. You know, there's a disco element that's not in this, but kind of goes right along with it. And uh, of course the story is, and it kind of, in a way it refers to the kayfabe part right, of it, yeah. right? Because like they're doing their part, but it goes wrong and his buddy ends up dying. You killed him. Yeah, yeah. Again, I was about super to, heavy. I was about to make a terrible joke, but I, I restrained myself. It's kind of neat, though, to see, like, the uh, the acknowledged kayfabe stuff, right? Like, hit harder, right? <laughs> Man, it's got to be tough when you're not in a lockup to be able to, uh, you know, give give codes to each other. Yeah, and also those, uh, yeah, those wheels aren't, aren't helping either. I feel like that just accelerates the thing got to take that flat back bump not 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 on your neck yeah so it gets gets branded a killer and kind of disappears and struggling with it man having a hard time heads to uh heads to la with his girlfriend d lil brown was never the same <laughs> that little kid calls him pig meat there's a lot of uh weird weird jargon weird slangs in here it's a strange piece. Like he he steps in because these skateboarders are beating on that kid selling comic books. And then that kid gives him a hard time. You know what's funny is is this a is this a reprint? Or maybe I don't think so. maybe it's a little later. Like but like there we see comics and I swear there's one that said Spider Man and then another one that's like Superman. It might be later. Yeah, it could be. Um, the kids uh, gets into skateboarding as well. A little bit of a uh, friendship develops between them. And uh, until one day, <laughs> this ends whenever his girlfriend <laughs> comes stumbling home, horribly slashed unto death you know, by a motorcycle gang. You know, that's the origin of the Double Dragon. And this made me wish that Continuity Studios was in charge of that comic. Because, like, you would see the cabinets that had, like, pen and ink artwork, and it was just kind of off or whatever. But it was off in, this, in sort of this similar way, man. And it makes me wish that they had, uh, you know, like, replaced this with Jimmy or Billy Lee. And, and now you got, you got gold. <laughs> no! 
Homage to George Perez right Look there. At this dude, man. This is Skate Man. <laughs> Just moody shadows. Rage enough to fill you with a purpose. Rage to harden your heart and hide the pain. Breaks the kid's skateboard. Throwing him out. N no, this is genius. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Yeah, so he's gonna uh, he's gonna turn to his roller skates to, <laughs> to get his revenge. We're going Dogtown Z boys, except roller skating. That's what I'm talking about, dude. Like, maybe maybe like that's the first distraction. Like, like the bad guys see the shine of your upper thigh, and then they get distracted, and then you can kick them one in the kisser. <laughs> Yeah, the, the the all that white doesn't seem like a good idea for uh, an Avenger, <laughs> an Avenger searching for the skull backed jackets. It even explains like he he has like uh, an origin for like the mask, and I think he's literally just going through his hamper. Yeah, right, and just like come pulls out like uh, some some rags or something. And of course, uh, this eventually goes wrong. As the bikers get the upper, catch him off guard, get the upper hand, and we see him like skull montage, golden age comic shits right there, dude. Cartoonist Kayfabe is brought to you by the comic books that we make in stores right now. Red Room Trigger Warnings issue one, two, and three are on the stands. Murder on the dark web for fun and profit. Every issue completely self-contained, and you could grab uh, the Anti-Social Network trade paperback, which was twenty twenty one's season of Red Room Comics. Jimmy produced. Hulk, Grand Design, Monster, and Madness, both in stores right now where he's taking the entirety of the uh, Incredible Hulk storyline, distilling it down into two 40-page comics, 60 years worth of Incredible Hulk comics uh, in one handy package. Get them while they're hot, while we're done paying the bills. Let's get back to this video. But see, our Spicoli, he ain't no dummy, man, because he put a little engine on that joint. He's making up for breaking that kid's skateboard now. He's starting to feel better, and he and he regrets it. Got the little yin-yang on there. See, this is the stuff that I wanted, Ed. I wanted more of the motorized skateboard vigilantes. Well, just wait till the Z-Boys come and, and show up at the docks. Getting along with, uh, with that boy's mom, who uh, nurses him back to health. So maybe it's not just revenge that he's that he needs. See now we're see that's like crusty bunker stuff, man. There's a few of those places that I would say crusty bunkers. I mean, even some of this stuff feels, you know, not like a, like Neil Adams line. It's 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 nearly Charlton comic page right there. It it, it does have those elements. <laughs> Here's the gang, and a couple of them grab his uh, his girl, but uh, he's able to free her before she ends up slashed to death. Yes, <laughs> yeah. They're surrounded by the bikers whenever the skateboard gang shows up. I love this drawing of all them. Oh, yeah. This is a really fun line. It looks like a pen or a marker or something pretty simple. You know, like classic cartooning of just drawing in a bunch of these figures. But all in different uh, different poses. And some of them are doing like skateboard, kind of like skateboard moves that you might see at a competition in the uh, early 80s. The non-dog boys. The, 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 <laughs> the 70s, man. Like that, 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 like that stuff where it's like sidewalk surfing. Yeah. Rather than Tony Hawk. <laughs> you know, this is uh, Jay Adams and Stacy Peralta. I don't care how badass these dudes are. If you're the motorcycle gang, you can't back down from this. Uh -uh. A guy on roller skates, like, you can't say, say uh-oh. You don't get to come out your house ever again. <laughs> That's Fast Freddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he's like, the kids are like ran by some like pimp guy or something. What I would say, though, is uh, it's testament to their drawing abilities. Because I love the action stuff. Almost any of the homage or any of the montage stuff is usually pretty good. And uh, the action stuff is really badass looking. That's almost a Wolverine. If you cover up the foot, that's like Wolverine running at you. Sure. And, and we've seen uh, see Spider-Man issue 10 recent video <laughs> because that is your opening silhouette. Great angles, too. You know, for doing motion, like, that's all pretty good. There are parts of this that just don't work. But the parts that do work, like there's something here, yeah. you know, like you, if you can draw speed and Neil Adams and continuity certainly can, there could have been something with a character like this because all the motion stuff is really strong. That's a pretty fun scene, you know, shades of what we'd see in Back to the Future, hanging onto the bumper, guy shooting out the window, but he's scrouching down. It all works pretty well. I wonder who the anchor was on this. See, that's the that's the odd thing, man. Would not recommend this at home, anybody. Oh no! <laughs> like, like, do you remember, yeah. like, when R River Phoenix, before he passed, he was in a movie, 
and it had this scene cut out where it was like him, Christian Slater, maybe a couple other dudes. They were they were laying in a street on the double yellow line as cars were going by, and like kids were doing that. In, it was in the trailer. Kids were doing that shit in real life, and they cut that scene out of the movie. I don't remember that at all, but I can see why. I, I can understand imitators doing that, and like you can't show that. <laughs> I mean, I can't. Uh, I'm, I'm a victim blamer in this case, Jimmy. <laughs> like, Fair enough. Like, uh, it's the power of media suggestion. How about that? Okay, there you go. Even this choice, you know, like this is a six-panel grid, more or less. I kind of love this as a six-panel grid, by the way, because mm-hmm. uh, he does some really cool stuff, like having, you know, two of the panels work as a vertical here, but also not having perfect sizes. You know, there, it's not a perfect six-panel grid. You get a couple of diagonals here just slightly to uh, indicate something's wrong or to indicate that movement. And the nunchucks work well with the uh, skates, I think. I just watched uh, Pinocchio again for the first time in a long time. And like when I go to Pleasure Island, the boys are smoking uh, stogies and playing pool. And and I, rem- <laughs> and I remember uh, in a Jer- Jack Kirby interview we did where he was talking about, like, I don't know, meeting Roz's f- folks or something and feeling nervous that they thought he was like a guy who would shoot pool. <laughs> I guess it was a game of vice or something like very low class. I was actually trying to look it up to see what was so, so bad about billiards. Yeah. I think it's the pool halls. Yeah. Probably where the bad reputation comes from. There was a pool hall in a neighborhood town, a neighboring town whenever I was uh, in high school. And I remember like the neighboring town and our town would have like big town fights and that's, it would usually be instigated by something at the pool hall. (laughs) (laughs) That's a pretty, pretty tough move. That guy's not going to do anything else. No, no, he's done. All right, so that's the end of our the end of our story here, and uh, really the end of Skate Man. I don't think Skate Man makes any another appearance anywhere, not an echo of, of uh, future past. Is that the name of the yeah yeah, yeah continuity? Like I think that's continuity's first book, but I don't think we see Skate Man again. Um, but we'll keep going through this book because there's some some kind of fun stuff in here. Yeah, like who is who are these people, man? Like you see the colors, but like who the fuck drew this thing? I think this is uh, again. It's Where are the credits? Like clearly, there's some Qberts on a Qbert on this page, right? But how much? And uh, it's it's strange because this is like near the end of Pacific. So what are they packing up here? Again, I don't see any credits on any of this. Yeah, but except for the colors, got to get the color guys some <laughs> props, man. And this stuff even feels like uh, like it's like inking over top of Wally Wood or somebody. Yeah, it's bizarre. I mean, I assume this is very young Hubert boys. Sure, yeah, they would do like uh, inking and lettering and things. And some of it looks pretty cool, like some of the shadows and stuff on that form, pretty good. Vanguard Illustrated, interesting. You see Brendan McCarthy's work here from uh, Freak Wave. That was a cool anthology. There's some stuff in there. I think is the Steve Rude. Uh, like Steve Rude's first comic in there, the Encyclopedia comic. Yeah, I don't know that. I think it might be in there. I wonder too, like, does does Joe Kubert touch these pages? Is he, is he fixing up maybe a face here or there? Or? He, he does these like kind of layouts. It's, they're definitely cribbing him. Maybe tighten up a pencil or something. Doesn't seem like Kubert to not have a signature on there. This right here, uh, Professor Om, um, is like one of my first hundred comics, like issue one of this uh, by Paul S. Power. I, I don't e- I don't even think it was published by uh, Pacific. Um, it might yeah, have been... I bet it wasn't. Yeah, this, this feels like an ad or like the beginning of something. Yeah, and uh, and this is near the end. You see, Sergio's groove started out at Pacific, so that's the issue five ad there. Look at that! <laughs> Look at that outfit, man! And you see him walking around like a like a thong g string and stuff. <laughs> that's hilarious. A lot of fetishization of the uh, the male form there. Man, it's such a different era of like comics making you know with some of these panels and stuff trying to get in as much as they can in, in a couple of pages this really brings shit back dude because like when i had that first you know hundred like two two stacks underneath my bed like when friday would come and i knew i had the weekend i would just read through my same like 50 100 comics and i read professor Om a million <laughs> times that's hilarious <laughs> dave dave stevens doing a cover there for uh, vanguard illustrated yeah, he'd show up no doubt they asked for it, Jimmy. That is a uh, that is a definitely a snapshot of time, like early direct market, trying to figure this stuff out. And like you noted, Ed, it feels like that's a joint continuity studios effort. Yeah, yeah, and definitely like 
Neil Adams was going for something like, like you don't just put in that this level of work for for no reason, man. And it's like, is this is this the the hero of the eighties? Is is that what you're going for, man? Nobody's done the the, the roller derby superhero it, yet. It does make me wonder, like, did he cross paths with skateboarders or? some kind of demo or something you know <laughs> roller derby something that made him think like yeah there that that would work on a comics page he went to go see mark texiera's uh roller derby heats back in the day or something. something yeah it feels like there was something that crossed his path that he saw potential in and i see that potential in here but man it's weird that it's this grim and gritty vigilante <laughs> interpretation you know what i might like that better than if it were lightweight and fun and funny Teach their own, Jimmy. Good to go? Yes. K Fabers, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell, we'll notify you when new vids are available. What's out there, Jim? Hulk Grand Design Monster and Hulk Grand Design Madness are both in comic shops now while supplies last. That is a retelling of the 60 year history of the Incredible Hulk through my words, art, color, lettering, everything uh, by me. And uh, join me on patreon.com. Red Room Trigger Warnings, issue one, two, and three are on, this, on the stands as we speak. Murder on the dark web for funded profit is the name of the game in a Red Room universe. Every issue completely self-contained, banned in 28 countries, banned in 10 comic shops, but you can uh, order those comics at almost any comic shop uh, you visit, or go to my uh, link tree in the description below this video. You can go to the Fantagraphics website to order and pre-order my comics. You can uh, go to the Patreon and read the comics uh, online, more than 200 pages. $3 for the archive, new strips every Tuesday. What else do we have out there, Jim? Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts and merchandise at the links below this video. That's another great way to support the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel. Jimmy, give them those marching orders. We'll be on our way. Read more comics.